All right, folks, what's going on? It's Larry again, Packmaster's Dog Training. So this goes directly with the video I posted this morning about the uh, e-collar usage, okay, on stopping dogs from chasing things. I had a ton of questions, and they're all basically correction-based questions. So let's see if I can cover this real quick. I meant to do it in the last video, but to be honest, once you start filming, it's hard to keep track of everything, and you don't want to go on for too long. So let, let's try to keep this real simple, okay? Correcting behaviors with the e-collar. Totally okay if they're physical behaviors, not mindset behaviors, all right? So you guys have heard me talk about mindset bad behaviors before as opposed to physical behaviors, voluntary behaviors. What do I mean by that? Things like, you know, a dog jumping or, or barking or digging or chasing things. These are all choices. These are all voluntary behaviors, things that the dog can control. Even if the urge is real strong, they're things that the dog can't control. They're physical behaviors. All of those behaviors are easily stopped with the e-collar once the dog truly understands the language, right? Please remember that. Once the dog truly understands and is comfortable and there's no confusion with the e-collar, those behaviors can be corrected very easily and very fast, and they stop immediately. That's one of the beautiful things about the e-collar. It keeps dogs in their home. It keeps dogs from being put in the shelter. Now, where people fail with that, they're too quick to turn to using it for corrections or punishment, however you want to call it, when the dog still doesn't understand the language. Okay, very simple. And many of you the dog needs a translator to really understand that language, okay? When you guys get rid of the translator too, fa too fast, the translator is the leash, all right? When you start the teaching process, the conditioning process, teaching the dog the meaning of the e-collar, many of you are too quick to get rid of the leash. That leash is your translator. That dog don't understand the language. You're using that leash to help guide the dog to the response that you want to teach him with the stimulation means, right? So we put a few things together so the dog truly learns how to understand the sensation of the e-collar. First, we use the sensation of the e-collar itself. We use the verbal command and we use the leash. The leash is that translator. You put all three together to help guide the dog so he learns what it means. So many people are quick to get rid of the translator. You got to hold on to that leash for a long time, guys, because the last thing you want to do is have the dog blow you off and then that's where people start getting on the button too much and raising levels. That's not what you want to do. So keep that leash on there till the dog truly understands it. Then when the dog truly understands it, whether that's two weeks, three weeks, a month, two months, it doesn't matter. Then those physical, voluntary, bad behaviors that you don't want can be fixed immediately and very, very easily, I promise you. Now, what I mean by a mindset behavior are things that the dog can't help. He has no control over. Um, fear anxiety, aggression. You know, most aggression is caused by fear and anxiety and insecurities. These are things that the dog can't help. So you never see me correcting a dog with the e-collar for these behaviors, all right? So what do I mean by that? Again, these are things in the dog's head that he has no control over. You can't correct a dog for something they can't control. It causes mass confusion and fear. And again, this is a big failure on the part of many, many e-collar users. So the dog exhibits some kind of unwanted mindset behavior, usually aggression. The e-collar goes on. The dog shows the aggression and they light the dog up. Horrible, horrible. That's not dog training. And let's say it works immediately. It's very temporary, I promise. I promise you, it's doing nothing to change the mindset of the dog. So when I'm working with an aggression case, I need to change the dog upstairs. I don't need the dog to avoid showing me those bad behaviors, to avoid the punishment. I need the dog to truly change his mind where he no longer feels a need to be aggressive or fearful or anxious. You understand what I'm saying? Very important. I'll give you an example. Same example I've used in, in my book. It's probably still my most watched video with Keezy, the, the human aggressive pit bull mix, right? I've used it before because that's a video you guys can watch and I have written about it. So that dog had a beautiful turnaround, right? He went from really wanting to kill me, even though it was fear-based, yes it was, to at the end, not only not wanting to hurt me, 
but come into group classes and happy, happy, relieved, and no stress there. That's always the goal. So people see me use the e-collar in that video. They say, well, what you were doing with it? Very simple. I'm going to break it down again. And mainly because there's a lot of new people out there following my stuff that haven't heard me talk about it before. When you see me use the e-collar in that video, I couldn't condition that dog like I normally do because it was a total different case. That, that dog was very far gone, okay? I couldn't give him treats. I couldn't touch him. He had a muzzle. It was ugly. You guys can watch the video. You can read about it. So the way I utilized the e-collar in that video was still at super low levels, and many people assumed that when that dog would try to attack me, I was correcting him with the e-collar. False. It couldn't be more false. That is absolutely the opposite thing you want to do. So what I did with the e-collar with that dog was the opposite. What's the stressor? Me. I'm the stressor. I'm what sends that dog into a rage, right? That dog is scared to death and he exhibits it, exhibits it, yeah, exhibits it in rage. And what he wants to do is attack me. That's how he's going to keep himself safe, keep me away, right? So with the e-collar, I did different. Using the continuous button and le light leash pressure, I start using the e-collar and leash pressure to bring the dog toward me. The exact opposite of what he wants to do, right? He comes toward me. So now he doesn't understand what that stimulation means. It's completely foreign to the dog, right? So for that brief second, as soon as he feels it, it creates confusion. So in this case, confusion is not bad. It's good because the confusion takes his mind away from the fear and the stressor, which is me. So now it goes to the stimulation, which he's never felt before. So there's confusion. The second that dog takes a step toward me, the exact opposite that he doesn't want to do, right? The leash pressure stops, the e-collar stops, and that's the first positive thing that happens in that dog's mind. So he did the exact opposite that he wanted to do and something good happened. The leash pressure and e-collar stimulation stop. And then the next good thing that happens is he's next to me and nothing bad happens. So now the dog starts thinking, the wheels are turning. Still total confusion, but it's in a good way because it takes the mindset away from what it was just two minutes ago. You understand what I'm saying? And we did that a lot. And then the other way the e-collar was utilized with that dog, and I show it in the video and I wrote about it, is as I took that dog for a walk and he's at my side, every time I turned 180 degrees, tap, tap. So again, he feels the e-collar and he's to follow me. So again, good things happen from this dog following me. It starts putting a lot of power in his own hands. You understand what I'm saying? It builds that confidence. It empowers the dog because they have a big say in what happens. Very, very important, guys. That's what I mean about a mindset behavior. So those mindset behaviors, I'm never going, con going to correct with the e-collar. I'm going to still utilize the e-collar in some way or another and implement it in a regular, regular training program. But that's what you have to understand. So again, many people are doing that. Let me put it on people terms when I talk about a mindset, how powerful it is. If you don't change it, you don't get results. It's that simple. Let me put it in people terms. And this might not make no sense to some of you. When I first got to Kentucky, like 18 years ago, I saw a sign for a tough man contest, right? It was at a National Guard armory here. So I said, oh, I really like to box. I haven't boxed in years. I'm fat and out of shape. Let me see what kind of shape I'm in. So I signed up for this tough man contest. I went up there one Saturday night and it was a spectacle. I could really make you guys laugh if I just tell you about this. It's, it was definitely something to see, okay? Middle of, of pretty redneck area, Kentucky. You got this tough man contest going. Here's this guy from New Jersey, right? So I go in there. There's a lot of guys who signed up to fight in this tough man contest. Most should not have been there. Most were scared to death, all right? You had guys in work boots and jeans and no shirt and big beards drinking beer. I mean, it was something else. But there was one guy in there everybody was scared of. No one wanted to fight. And you could see everyone watching what he did. And I saw the look on everyone. They were scared to death. And then I heard people saying they didn't want to fight him. And they were going to the promoters. They didn't want to fight him. This guy, he looked like a young George Foreman, except much more jacked. He was a scary looking dude, right? Nobody wanted to fight him. And this guy's putting on the show, the mean show. He's shadow boxing and people are getting scared. So I went up to the promoter and I said, hey, um, you know, that guy's a lot heavier than me, but I'll, I'll fight him in the, in the first go around. No one else wants to fight him. And he said, you sure? I said, yeah, I'm sure. I'll fight that guy. So I was very, I didn't worry about this. I was very confident, you know. And so it gave people a lot of relief. But at the same time, when the people that saw me do that, 
Now they're scared to death of me. They're like, what's wrong with this guy? Why would he want to fight him? So now they're scared of him and now they're scared of me. So it's our turn to fight. The guy's in the ring before me. I come into the ring playing some pretty good music, okay? Method Man, bring the pain, right? That's what I come into for that fight. I come in and I walk up to the guy. Now what most people do, they go to the other side, they start eyeballing each other, they try to scare each other. I didn't do that. I walked up to him and I was very nice. I was nice to him. I kind of whispered to him, you know, I said, hey, don't worry. I said, I'm not going to hurt you. And I just walked away. I was very nice to him. But I assured him that I would not hurt him. That whole guy's demeanor changed, okay? Because what I'm supposed to do in his eyes is go to the other side of the corner and I'm supposed to be scared because everyone's scared of him. And I'm supposed to eyeball him and try to make like I'm not scared of him. But instead, I walk up to him and I whisper very, very nice. Don't worry, I'm not going to hurt you. And I walk away. From that second, everything changed. That guy was no longer trying to win the fight and trying to intimidate me. Now that guy was just trying not to get hurt. That's what he did. It was over before it started. You know, I won that fight very easily, first round, no problems, very easily, because the guy didn't try to beat me. He tried not to lose. Do you understand what I'm saying? You have to change what's upstairs in the brain. Same thing with the dogs. You have to change their mindset. If you don't change their mindset, you can't extinguish things like aggression, anxiety, and fear. Don't correct them with the e-collar. The other things, teach the language, use the translator, not a problem. Peace, it's Friday.